As you enter the forklift, grab the handle, put your foot on the step, and put the other hand on the steering wheel. This allows for three points of contact while entering the forklift. Once in the operator compartment, you will see that the emergency brake is on the floor. Push down with your foot to engage. The release for the brake is located under the steering wheel. With your hands on the steering wheel, all the controls are within fingertip reach. On the left of the steering wheel, you have your directional lever. The top is for moving forward, the bottom is for reverse, and neutral in the center. On the right side, you have your automotive style light switch and your left and right direction signals. In the center of the steering wheel is your horn. On the side of the steering column, you have the memory steering column, which allows you to adjust the steering height. On the left is your brake fluid reservoir. When you turn the dash on by key, the display will show the battery indicator, date, and time speed in kilometers, and the angle of the forks. By pressing the arrow button on the display, you will see the key on indicator, which will be used to track warranty. Press again and you will see the drive hours and the lifting hours on the pump. On the right side are the cowl mounted controls, which are universal for all Toyota forklifts. The left control is for lifting. The center control is the tilt. And the right control is the side shift. On the center shifter, there is the automatic fork leveling button. Press the button while pushing the tilt level forward. The forks will stop at 90 degrees relative to the forklift. Behind you, you will find the rear assist grip. The grip also comes with a horn button to warn other operators in the area. The accelerator and brake area is designed with lots of room for your safety shoes. The overhead bars are angled to allow you to see the load or racking at height. For access to the battery, Place the steering wheel in the upright position, release the hood safety latch in the center, use the handle to open the hood. Open the hood all the way back so you can reach the latch to hold the hood in the upright position safely while you are doing your battery check or watering. Under the hood you will find a series of 48 volt batteries this particular forklift is fitted with a watering jumper system. Quick connect the main hose, which outputs to tubes that fill the cells. Once the cells are full, the back pressure will stop the water and you can then disconnect your hose. The seat is a four-way full suspension vinyl seat. In the center, you have the suspension adjustment depending on the operator's weight. On the sides are the lumbar support and tilt. The hood safety latch should be in the closed position. The safety latch will keep the hood down in a locked position, keeping the battery in the forklift if there was a tip over situation. When unplugging the connector, do not grab it by the cables as this could cause them to come loose, which may cause arcing. Sit-down counterbalance trucks are equipped with an operator present system. If the forklift is in drive and you take your weight off the seat, you will hear a warning beep. The screen will indicate a message to return to operating position. While the forklift is in drive, the forklift will not move. You will need to shift the forklift into neutral, then back into the drive position to allow you to continue operation of the forklift. On every Toyota forklift, you will find a data plate, which will have information such as model number, a unique serial number, attachments in use, the maximum lift height that the mast is capable of, weight of the forklift, minimum and maximum weight of the battery, and maximum amp hour allowed. The operator manual should stay with the forklift at all times. You can reference items in the manual such as safety controls, operator display, troubleshooting, and daily maintenance. When watering your batteries, do a visual inspection to ensure that the terminals are clean and there is no visual damage to the battery. Check floor pedals to make sure that the rubber has not worn down. 
Visually inspect your tires to make sure that they are not showing signs of wear. See that cables are not cut or frayed, which could cause sparking. Inspect all hoses to make sure there are no visible cracks or leaks. If you have lights, make sure they are in proper working order. Check the forks to make sure there are no breaks or cracks. Look for any visible dents in the body of the truck, showing some type of impact with the truck. The horn should be in proper working order. LED screen should be working correctly. The data plate is legible. Check all plugs to make sure that cables are not coming loose. Ensure that the steps are clear of debris. 